Hi, I'm Bill Mould, and this video, through the use of graphics, will give you some insight into the construction of deep section carbon composite rims. I commend to you a nice article written by Leonard Zinn for Velo News. Consider this to be the shape of the deep section composite rim that we want to make. It will be constructed from unidirectional prepreg that has fibers that run parallel to each other as seen here. Commercially, the prepreg is available in rolls like this, much like you might buy fabric from a fabric store. Now, importantly, the fibers and thus the prepreg is very strong in this direction, but the prepreg is not strong in this direction. For our deep section rim, we're going to cut out an arc-shaped piece of the prepreg. And the arc-shaped piece is going to be laid on the mold as we see here. Within this arc, that particular fiber is going to be the strongest. That particular fiber is going to be perpendicular to the tangent of the rim at that point, and we get a right angle. And that same fiber is also collinear with the radius. But as I start moving away from that first fiber to the second one, I find that that particular fiber is no longer perpendicular to the tangent, and it is not collinear with the radius. Each subsequent fiber makes a decreasing angle with the tangent. Here is the next one. The next, the next, the next, and the last fiber in the arc. Of course, if I had gone counterclockwise from that strong fiber in the middle of the arc, I would have seen the same thing. If I put a surface under my wheel and put a load on it, then the wheel will be pretty strong in this orientation because the fibers in the middle of the arc are perpendicular to the surface or nearly perpendicular to the surface where they are the strongest. But in this configuration here, the ability of the wheel to support a vertical load will be diminished because of the less than optimal orientation of the fibers. Here's my first arc-shaped piece, in this case, without showing all of the individual fibers. This is what my wheel would look like after putting on three more shapes of arc exactly the same. But one layer of prepreg does not constitute my rim. From this information here, I can see that my ply is only about a tenth of a millimeter thick. But using this NV rim as an example, my depth of my rim is 70 millimeters. But in the sidewall, you see that my rim is somewhere around a half a millimeter thick, meaning I can have perhaps five or six plies of prepreg. So in getting ready to put on my second layer of prepreg arcs, Instead of putting the second pieces right on top of the first ones, I will stagger them so that they overlap. So here I have two layers of arc-shaped prepreg, like this. That's the first one, second, third, fourth, then I start overlapping, five, six, seven, eight. I would accomplish the same thing if I put the arcs on in this order, which is what I'm going to show you next. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now let's get daring with the graphics and show the buildup of those two plies with the individual fibers shown this time. There's my first arc. I'm going to lay on the second one, looking like this. And there is my strongest fiber. Here's my third ply, the fibers, and the strong one. Continuing. 
Another. Another. Another one. And now the last one. Now, if you can imagine adding maybe three more layers by staggering these plies slightly each time, we will approach what's called an isotropic construction of the rim where its composition is more or less even. The details of this process are highly proprietary and vary from one manufacturer to another, but I hope this overview gave you some insight into the process. Thank you for watching. Here is my contact information.